Hello gems and welcome to the Sapphire Star. We are in episode 9 of 10 for the full body VTuber series and in this episode we're going to be diving into how physics work. How to set up physics so that your hair can be all swishy and moving and any other accessories potentially like your necklace if you have a necklace. In this episode I'm just going to show you how to move the bangs and you'll be able to apply that knowledge to the rest of the hair, the necklace, and your chest. Now, this is the most exciting part about Live 2D. So many people love this because this is when your model truly feels like it is coming to life. I know it was one of my favorite pieces and so many of my friends favorite pieces as well. So we're going to dive straight into it. But before that, if this is your first time using Live 2D and you're interested in purchasing it, make sure you check the pinned comment below to find a discount code that you can use. All right, let's do this. Now, the first step for creating physics for your character is to make parameters that are going to control the physics. So you you have to decide what is going to be moving. So the first thing we're going to be focusing on is just the front hair, the front bangs. For hair, it's usually split into your front bangs section, middle of the hair, and then your back of the hair. Or technically it's called the side hair. So front hair, side hair, back hair is usually the different types of physics you're going to end up doing for hair. And something to keep in mind is that you can apply physics to pretty much anything. I can apply physics to the ears, to the bow, to the body, and it's highly encouraged that you do apply physics to pretty much anything that you can to help give the model a more smooth, animated, and lively feel. All right, so we'll go down to new parameter and we're gonna type in hair, bangs, swing, X. So for physics, we're gonna have things moving on an X axis and a Y axis. So X is gonna be left to right, Y is gonna be up to down, while the character is moving. So we're gonna start with the X axis and make sure to add on the exact same thing you typed above to the ID. So we're putting hair, bangs, swing, X and there's no spaces in between. And we're gonna do for the minimum negative 15 and for the maximum 15. That's just a number I found that I like. You can experiment with that. We'll go ahead and click okay. And now I'm gonna create a folder called hair. This is gonna help us organize and I'm gonna drag the hair into here. All right, and we're gonna go find our bang by clicking there. And next what I'm gonna do is, instead of using the classic warp to move the bangs around, what we're going to do is use the deform path edit tool, which we used when we were rigging the eyes earlier. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start at the top and we're just gonna follow the curvature of the bang. Okay, that should be good. And then I'm gonna click back on my selection tool here. And we're just gonna go ahead and add this to each piece. So we're gonna wanna make sure we have it added. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this section of the video, but you're more than welcome to slow it down to see how I'm adding them to each piece. Now that we have that all set up, we're going to start with the big bang and we're going to click on the hair bang swing X that we just created and we're going to drop three points and we're going to swing all the way to the right here. Make sure you're on your selection tool and move the bangs on over to the right. And it's okay if the lines get a little weird. Most of the time you actually won't even notice it in the physics window, but if you do, of course, you can come back and edit it. So we're just going to be moving that to the right here. And then of course, we're going to snap to our left point and move it to the left. Now I always recommend that you try to exaggerate as much as possible. It's in the principles of animation to exaggerate to help it look its best. And also we do have the hair passing in front of the eye right now, so that's something I'm gonna have to fix in a bit, but it's okay for now. All right, so there's that first piece, and now we'll click on the second piece here, and we're gonna do the same thing. Drop our three points, and we're gonna go ahead and snap to the right and move it up. And I'm going to speed up this section of the video as well to help us save time, and you can slow it down if you'd like while I am moving the bangs over. Now we have the swinging back and forth, which is great. Next, we're gonna create another new parameter and this one's gonna be hair, bangs, and we're gonna call it bounce Y. So this is gonna be up and down. And remember, we wanna add the same exact wording to our ID here at the end of param. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna change this to negative 15 and 15 as well. We'll click okay and make sure this is in the hair folder. And now we're gonna do up and down, but for this one, we're not gonna use these points. We're actually gonna use the normal deformer, which I need to move mine up because it got moved down here. So I'm gonna click control alt, move this up and I'm just gonna reshape it a little bit. We might even do a warp deformer per each bang. So let's do one together, for example. We're gonna go to this one and I'm gonna create a warp deformer and let's do 
do hair bang five Y. We'll just go ahead and create that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click plus on all three. And then we're gonna snap click to the right and right is going to be up. So we'll go ahead and move this overall up. I'm actually gonna to go to an ed editing level of three. So we have a pretty big overview. You can switch between these for different levels of how much you're moving it. So then we have that. And then we're gonna have it stretch when it goes to the left. So then we're gonna stretch it down. Cause this is when the character is moving up and down, right? We'll have it go like that. And now we're gonna do the same thing for the rest of the pieces. Again, I'll do a speed paint and you can slow it down if you'd like. Okay, we got all the basics there set up. Next, we will link these together. And again, you can unlink them anytime. It won't break anything. So we have everything linked together. So now let's go ahead and actually set up the physics. So we're gonna go up to the modeling, open physics. Make sure apply physics is selected on. If you click spacebar, it can be a hotkey to turn it off. So if you're ever clicking space and it decides to turn it off, um, make sure that is checked. And next, what we're going to do is we're gonna click add. We're gonna call this hair bangs. We're gonna drop this down and click head input because this means when the head moves, it should be reading the parameters that are here connected to that. So this is whatever it's attached to. And then next we're gonna do physics mode. We're gonna do long. Usually you do short for bangs. I like long it's just cause that's the one I prefer the look of. So there's no wrong or right answer really for anything with physics. You're just gonna have to mess with it and see what looks good for your character. And that'll take some practice. So we're gonna go on a little bit. So then we're gonna go ahead and click okay. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go to output settings and we're gonna click add Add, and we're gonna add both of the hair pieces here. Let's change the scale to 15 because that's what our max was. You'll change this to whatever your max was. And the effective, make sure it's at 100. So now when we move the hair back and forth, you can see that the physics are working. You want your input settings, of course, to be the different pieces of how the body moves. So whatever is happening when angle X moves for the body, the bangs move. When body X moves, the bangs move, right? So that's kind of what helps starting to calculate that. Now for all your different pieces down here, these are, there are different things will happen when you change each of them. So if we move the duration up, you can see it's gonna really slow down the movement because it thinks it's longer, the pendulum gets longer. But if we have it shorter, you'll see the pendulum is really short. And I'll usually measure this for how long the hair is. So we'll just put it at a 10 and I feel like that's pretty good. I might even go actually a little bit longer because her bangs are a little bit longer bangs, 15, and then see how that feels. And that feels a little bit more natural. Next for the shaking, this is how much it's shaking. Is it shaking a lot and really quickly or is it going really low, which would be maybe like a 0 0.5? It's gonna be a lot slower. So I actually really liked the 0 0.95. I felt like that worked pretty well for what we were going for. So again, mess with it, see what works for you. The reaction speed is the duration of how long it's shaking for. Those presets usually have a pretty good idea of what you'll want. And the overall acceleration means the overall change of speed. This is your pendulum right here and you can always watch this to see how your physics are reacting. So the higher the number, the overall speed increases. So let's just change this to 10 for example. And the lower the number, the slower kind of the speed. It's, it's a weird, fee it's something that you kind of gotta feel out. It's very difficult to explain. It's more something that you're gonna feel when messing with these numbers. So again, I liked 1.5. I felt like that worked pretty well. You can also add a second pendulum if your hair is long or has a curl. So like, or a second section. So how these have curls, I'd maybe add a second pendulum. What happens if you do that? It has its sort of whole own set down there, which can add a whole unique set of effects in and of itself to have it split like that but we're just gonna be sticking with one here. All right, so next we're gonna do the necklace. And again, I would do this to everything, like the choker, the bell, all that, but we're just gonna keep it simple for this video. We're gonna do the necklace. So very similar process that you would do to add physics to literally anything. We're gonna click new parameter and we're just gonna call this necklace swing X. And then remember, let's add it here. And I'll just do the same parameters here, negative 15 and 15, click okay. And then we're also gonna add our necklace bounce Y and do the same thing. Okay, and then we'll create a new folder 
and we'll just call this necklace. Then we'll drag both these guys in there and open the necklace. So very similar process that we're gonna do. We're gonna add a warp, individual warp to the sapphire necklace, create warp. We'll do necklace warp X. And this one, we're gonna stay with a warp deformer. We don't need the, the worm tool. And now we're gonna go to necklace swing X and we're gonna drop our three points. We're gonna swing to the right and we'll have it go this way like that. And then we'll have it swing to the left. And I'm just gonna rotate it and kind of move it over. So there we go, we have the swing. And next we're gonna go to Y bounce, drop three points, go to the right. We're gonna squish it up and then we're gonna go down and bring it wider. Okay, great. And we're gonna wanna do the same for the actual band of the necklace. So I'm gonna go ahead and dro drop a warp deformer. We're gonna call this necklace strap warp. Now for the strap, we're going to drop three points, swing over, let's rotate this, and then go back to the left, rotate this. Then we're gonna go to the bounce and we're gonna drop our three points, go to the right, bring it up, bring it down. And obviously the pieces are not connected right now, so I'm gonna have to go back to this gem and fix that. So I'm gonna snap to the right and just move it up. I'm holding shift down, then go to the left, move it down so it's lined up. And then for this, we'll move it to the right with it and then snap to the left. All right, so now it should all be good. And then we can go ahead and link these two as well. Now it looks like it had some spots that are disagreeing with us. So I'm just gonna check everything to make sure that it's aligned correctly. So let's go to move that up here. We'll see how this looks. Okay, yeah, that's starting to look good. And then we can link them. All right, and now for the necklace physics, we'll go to modeling. We're gonna click add. We'll call this necklace. And this is gonna be for the body input. We'll do long for the necklace. And then we'll go over to our output settings and we're gonna add the necklace pieces. So these two, click okay. Turn the scale to 15 and there we go. I gotta fix some pieces. It has a little bit of an off movement, but now we have some of the necklace moving. It looks really great. And finally, we have the chest area to do. Same thing that as we were applying before, we're gonna create a new parameter and type in, I'll just call it boba, boba, boba swing X, swing X. And then we'll do negative 15, 15. All right, and then we'll create another new one, boba bounce Y. I'm just gonna copy this, paste it at the end here, negative 15, 15, click okay. And let's create a new folder called boba. You can move both the boba pieces in there. And now we'll move to where the chest area would be and we're gonna drop a warp deformer here called uh, sweater main, or sweater main warp X. And let's go ahead and drop our three points. We're gonna click to the right, move this over, and snap to the left, move this over. This one we'll have to be careful with because I have like that extra ribbing. So having any too much movement is gonna be a whole thing. Then we'll go to bounce Y, click plus, and then we'll move her up and then we'll go down and move her down. Okay, so that's just one piece. We wanna make sure we're getting this for the ribbing as well. Now I'm gonna go into a fast mode while I move all the pieces in the correct areas. You can slow it down if you'd like to see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, now that we have that all set up, we'll go up to modeling, physics, you know what to do. We'll click add, let's call it boba. And then we'll do the bust input and we'll just do short for this, click okay. And then go to output settings, let's add and select the boba and X. I actually need to X out, I don't think I linked them. Let's link them together and let's go back and we'll turn the scale again to 15. There we go. Yeah, that's a little a little short there. I think we're gonna change, I think we're gonna change the duration to 10. We're just gonna make it a little bit longer and see how that does. Yeah, that's much better. That's a little too short. Okay, so now we have the boba moving as well. So you see how adding this to pretty much everything, like your arms, your like bows, just every piece is really gonna help bring your character to life. People even add physics to like the eyes opening up. It's It really helps make it look super lively. Now we learned how to do animation in the last episode. Something I do wanna talk about is how we add these physics to animation without having to move each piece. So you can bake physics into your animation. So let's just open one of our recent files, which was like the Shy Saya, for example. And we can bake the physics in by going to the animation window, and then we can click track and bake animation from physics. And we'll just, it will select all the ones we need. The physics should be baked in so you don't have to move everything one by one. All right, now for our final export, we'll go up to file, export for runtime, and we'll do We'll export as MO3 file. This is gonna be a big file, so it's gonna take some time. <laughs> All right, so once we have our export piece up, make sure you select export physics settings. Otherwise, 
you will not have access to your physics. This is gonna be a separate file that it exports with. So click OK and let's select where that's saving. I'm gonna do physics sapphire demo and then we'll save it here. I'm just gonna click save and then we'll let that save. All right, now that we have everything ready to go, let's open in Cubism Viewer first. So I'm gonna drag the MOC3 file in here. And here is another great place that we can see our physics moving and at work. And then we'll also test VTube Studio since that's what I've been showing you guys throughout the series. So let's go ahead and open VTube Studio. And once everything is launched, we'll open the little person here, click import our model, open folder, and I'm just gonna do a new folder and I'm gonna call this physics Saya. Let's open that and then we'll go ahead and paste everything in. Okay, we'll click OK and then we'll reopen this and then we'll close it again for a second, reopen. And now the second one should be here and we'll click auto setup, click OK. And let's go to our settings and turn on our camera. And now you can see that some of my physics are moving. All right, I swapped back to my completed model. Now physics are very unique to the program that you're using. So if you're using any other program besides VTube Studio, each one has their own sort of settings. So a great place to look is with the person and gear icon and going down to your physics settings and messing with the different physics strengths to see how it affects your model and how the movement is. So you can turn the wind down too to have the physics kind of like always moving. Stuff like that dragging physics can help it be a little bit more flowy too. So again, just play with those different settings and see what feels good and works well with your model. Awesome, we got the physics done. You are pretty much done with your model. Of course, you'll have to do any of the extra pieces that you haven't done throughout the tutorial, but I'm super proud of you. In the next episode, we're actually gonna go over a few pointers and tips and last notes on things that would be helpful to know and other potential ways you can use Live 2D. So make sure to check out the next video to make sure that you understand the capabilities of Live 2D and where you can go with it. I'll see you next time on the Sapphire Star. Bye!